And I want to tell you a bit about Jim before we get started. But as I start to tell you about it, I am going to ask a couple of questions. I'll ask a question as I get started so you can be responding as, as I tell you his bio. And the first question has to do with whether you are a science teacher, whether you teach science. And then when we get that information, we'll find out whether you use a lab as part of that science teaching. So let me uh, talk to you about Dr. Brown. Dr. James W. Brown is an associate professor of science and former dean of science, engineering, health sciences, and human performance at Ocean County College in Toms River, New Jersey. I got that done right. Uh, Dr. Brown is a pioneer in creating online courses and has developed over 40 online courses in science, health sciences, and public health. He was one of the first to develop microbiology totally online. In industry, he has a background in history that's excellent as well. He was a director of microbiology for Roche Biomedical Laboratories and a vice president for Celsius Laboratory Group. In government, he is a former Assistant Commissioner of Health for the state of New Jersey and in academia, as we talked about, currently a professor and formerly a dean. Dr. Brown received a BA from Rutgers College and an MS and PhD in microbiology from Waxman Institute of Microbiology at Rutgers University. He earned an additional Master's of Science in Health Sciences from Jersey City State College. He has taught at the Johns Hopkins Johns Hopkins Medical School and at the New York College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Browns also is past president of the New Jersey Public Health Association and is an international speaker on issues in microbiology, biology, public health, healthcare, and online education and biosafety. He has speaking engagements that include the Chinese Medical Association in Peking and was the keynote address in HOPE 92 World Conference on AIDS and Drug Awareness. His many awards and speaking engagements are detailed in his online biography, which can be found, interestingly enough, and not surprisingly, on Soft Chalk Connect. So if you go to softchalkconnect.com and in your search simply type in biography, you will find his biography. And I would be um, remiss if I fail to mention that today we are announcing the Soft Chalk Lesson Challenge winners. And Dr. Brown uh, got an honorable mention in this year's Lesson Challenge. So applause and accolade to Dr. Brown. Let me turn this over to him in a moment. Let me close the current poll and share it. Interestingly, many, many science teachers. So we've got a bunch of science faculty here um, in different teaching in different ways. So more than half of you are science faculty. Interesting. Now let's get to the question at hand. If you if you are one of the 55 percent that teach online, tell us if you're using a virtual lab or a hands-on wet lab uh, as part of your education, part of your teaching. So Jim, I'm going to turn uh, this over to you as people are uh, responding to this question. OK. Um, uh, you've certainly heard about my background there. Let me get this full screen. And let me turn, let me turn this, uh, let me see, let a few more people vote, Jim, and then I'm going to turn this poll off, and we'll show it. And then after that, we'll 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 get going. So I'm closing the poll now. People are still voting. So I guess I'm they're feeling threatened that they'll be left out of the vote soon. So I'm closing the poll, and I'm sharing it. So you can see that 30% use a virtual lab, 42% use an actual hands-on wet lab, and 38% they don't use a lab as part of their, their science experience at all. So I'm going to turn, close this, and now the screen is all yours, and share away. OK, thank you much. I guess I'd be officially called a chalky. Uh, those are people who uh, absolutely Jim, love Jim, soft chalk. Jim, let me interrupt, yes. because I can't see your screen. So I'm not sure. Um, 
I turned it over Let to you, and it should say. Can you see that? My, no. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it back to my screen. Okay. And then I'm going to change it back to you because you may have missed the query when it came to your desktop. Oh, show my screen. Okay. There you go. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay. Buy yours. Okay, and you see me there? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, you owe me a soft chalk shirt in my size. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see that, what I that's, can do. That's a tough one. <laughs> I'm not a small guy. Anyhow, I love teaching. I love teaching face-to-face -face and online. It's, uh, it's a real challenge trying to take that same magic that you get in the classroom and put it online. But it's fun when you, when you can do it. And there's things you can do online you just can't do in the classroom. So the idea is you, you try to do a little of, uh, you know, it's the best of uh, all worlds. You try to pull it in if you can. Um, he pretty much went over my background. Uh, after being in industry and working for government, um, the, the important thing is going in being a, a former dean of science uh, and also a practitioner. Uh, I was... Uh, basically the director of one of the largest clinical labs in the world and also um, I was assistant commissioner over the public health and environmental labs in New Jersey which are sizable labs so uh, and actually I put myself through graduate school working as a clinical bench microbiologist so uh, I know what needs to go into the laboratory part of it uh, of that education so that's that's an advantage I bring to it um, I talked a lot about putting science totally online and we, we kind of got into this through the back door. I started out, we got a, 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 a grant from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for nearly half a million dollars and it was to put our nursing program online as far as the didactic portion. Uh, the clinical would be one day a week, so they call it the one day a week nursing program. So they're out doing their clinicals and all the rest and the rest of the time it's strictly online. It was a huge hit. And it's, uh, it prevented us, we, we didn't have to build a $12 million nursing building. Uh, however, we had problems right away. They still needed all the prerequisite science courses, uh, such as anatomy and physiology. And unfortunately, that was three days a week. Uh, our one day a week program basically was a 12-hour day. They, if they didn't pick up their uh, look at the patient's charts. They'd have to be in there at 5 o'clock in the morning. The clinical started at 7, ran through till about 4 o'clock. Then they'd have a colloquium. There would be a clinical practice lab. And then office hours for the professor. And people say, well, that's a 12-hour day. Well, hey, that's pretty much what nursing is now. Um, so the rest was taught online. And we got a lot of experience putting up online courses. Our problem was the labs, though. That kind of held us back. We weren't sure what to do. But to the naysayers, what's really cool, that one day a week uh, nursing program, um, they now call it the on-site online. If you're going to be an RN, you have to pass what's called an NCLEX RN exam. And they have consistently had 100% pass rate, something we haven't had with the face-to-face. -face. Right now, our face-to-face -face is 100%, but it has varied. But it has always been 100% there. They have always outperformed uh, the face-to-face, -face, which is... Uh, uh, there's a self-selection process there where the students who get in there are sort of self-starters or in the Northeast will use the word moxie. And a problem is here was our anatomy and physiology labs. They were running uh, all day long. They'd start at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, run until 10 o'clock at night. Uh, we put it up on Saturdays, even on Sundays. We went out also uh, into the local high schools and ran labs there at night when they weren't being used. Uh, so we were pretty much running out of space as well. And uh, this is where, well, I'll be talking about lab packs in a bit. Uh, but this was a huge need for us because this represented, you know, what good is a one day a week nursing program if they have to come three days a week to get their microbiology and their anatomy and physiology. One big problem we ran into right away is there were many professors that kind of didn't get it as far as how an online course should uh, look. It was sort of death by outline. 
uh, there was one professor, I remember that the outline kept on, I've never seen one that long in my life, and as I put in the bottom, students die after page after page of outlines with no interactivity whatsoever, not even, not even image. Uh, so here's where we stumbled into soft chalk. It kind of answered our problem there. Soft chalk had, oh, if you see in the background, that's the iPhone 4. Uh, I've got one of those and, and it is absolutely fantastic. Well, guess what? You can run soft chalk on your cell phone now and all your mobile devices, your, if you have a smartphone, it works nicely. Uh, but the whole idea was I had loved Dreamweaver, but when I saw soft chalk and how easy it was, especially putting in interactive web pages, uh, pop-up text, annotations, self-assessment quizzes, interactive learning games, and I think games are key because it's the MTV generation growing up out there and they love it. So if you, at the bottom of a, of a page, if you want to have some kind of a little activity, some kind of a game where you reinforce the main points that uh, you just made, it's fantastic. And now it opens up a whole new world with the, uh, uh, you know, all these mobile devices. Excuse me just a second. Okay, here's at the bottom of a, a typical page, what I always try to do is have some kind of a little uh, interactivity. And here's a game here, a crossword puzzle. A crossword puzzle does a lot. It really helps with the terminology, um, spelling for one, and uh, especially the scientific terms. Hey, you know, sporobolomyces, uh, Escherichia coli. There's, there's, you know, if you don't get a letter right, you know, you got a problem. So this is a fun way. Students absolutely love it, and it gives them instant results. It's, it's really a good thing to go through. Uh, this is my very good friend, Dr. Stephen Morris. He was at Rutgers when I was at Rutgers at the Watson Institute. He's now at the Rockefeller, very famous, and uh, uh, he signed my thesis. So, But what's cool, there's a whole bunch of videos. They're so easy to bring in a video, and you pop it in, and... Uh, it's uh, it just makes it uh, very nice. What I well, let me see if I can show you here. I want to show you this here. This little button here uh, that allows someone who is disabled, who cannot have as a disability, excuse me, who cannot hear, they'll get the video description and closed captioning. Um, let me see if I can show you one here. Real now, I've, the sound will not come through, so you'll just have to pretend there's sound there. But I just want to show you what you do. It's something I learned fairly recently here. Um, this is the very beginning of the microbiology here. I think it's on the second page. Let me check. I'm wrong, but take a look down here. See where it says mobile page? You just uh, click on that and it goes mobile on you. Let me do that. And it is so cool uh, because this way is what you'll see on your mobile device. So you can just keep going back and forth from one to the other there. Um, and I go back to a standard page now. Um, let me show you at the very back of this. I've got a neat little, um, yeah, here it is. Um, I love these drop and drag things. And let me see if I can pull this up. Hopefully everybody can see that. So microbiology, all the rest, perform surgery under aseptic uh, conditions. And that was, should be Joseph Lister. You can't hear it, but there's a very pleasant tone when it comes in and you get it right. Coin the term antibiotics. If I got this one wrong, which I'm going to, it bounces back and it goes boing. Uh, I graduated from the Waxman Institute of Microbiology, so I better get that to the right guy. So it's cool how you do this, postulate specific organism to a specific uh, disease, Koch postulates, disprove spontaneous generation was Louis Pasteur, hand washing reduces transmission of disease, let me tell you, Ignat, Ignat Semmelweis, anybody in nursing there will know that, and the first microscope, von Leeuwenhoek. And Oh, I guess I've played with this before. It should come down 100%, but uh, anyhow, that's, that's part of the fun of putting one of those up. And let me go back to the PowerPoint. Um, I'll show you that on 
another one here, but you want to hit that little button there, the CC for closed caption, and it is great because then you, as they speak, and most of your decent videos out there you'll find, and if you, if you go to YouTube, look for the ones that have a whole bunch of, you know, that have been used many times. They're le less likely to outdate on you, and especially if there's, this is from Discovery Channel, so, you know, they, they do it the right way, and that was my uh, drag and drop there I showed you. Okay, back to talking about putting science totally online. Well, we had to come up with some way of doing the laboratory, and that was, that was a big problem for us. We were pretty decent at doing the online course, that part, the, 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 the content, but as far as putting the, the laboratory, that was a challenge. And I have to say, this is a, a, a Dr. John Larson. He's our visionary president of Ocean County College. And what he did, he was at a conference, and he saw this little, you know, uh, going around. He saw this kind of lab-in-the-box kind of thing. And he got speaking to them, and I think they uh, had uh, either lunch or dinner together. He was very interested in this because he realized, hey, this was the answer to our problem. Came back. I was dean at the time. And he says, hey, Jim, I'd like you to check these people out. They're out in... Uh, uh, Colorado, and um, there's a, a guy who was a professor of chemistry. He put this on, on uh, he started putting chemistry online. It was a little cottage industry in his garage, and it grew and it grew and it grew. And now they're, they're pretty much, they have these little little boxes. They call them lab packs. And he says, I want you to check it out and see, see if it works for us. So sure enough, I acted out, and I fell in love with the lab packs, just as I did with soft chalk. And the lab packs had everything you need in it. Uh, uh, for microbiology, they sell a microscope and oil immersion lens, uh, and also uh, the lab manual with it. So it, you know, it's the we offer microbiology as a four-credit course. So one credit is totally uh, dedicated to the lab, and this takes care of it perfectly. It fits right into your online course. So this was wonderful. Some of the other things we looked into. This is the VH Dissector Pro. And uh, this individual here gave up everything in order to do this. And uh, he was on death row, and he decided to uh, donate his body to uh, science. They sliced and diced him. Many medical schools do this, they use this. And we use it in our laboratories to the face-to-face -face because it's wonderful. They can go in there. It's, it's, really, it's really great. I also teach at the American Military uh, University, and they have virtual labs. This is a virtual lab by McGraw-Hill, and it's frog dis dissection here. And where this really works well is, let's say, if you're deployed in a place where you just can't, you know, you're not going to be able to pull a microscope out or something like that. Although it's surprising how many, uh, even in uh, what we've had from both Afghanistan and, and Iraq, were able to use the lab packs. But this is another way of doing it. Uh, my, uh, my preferred uh, uh, answer is uh, do the hands-on lab whenever you can. What I found when I was dean as far as our courses being able to transfer, it was so much easier for us uh, to get the, the, the courses to transfer if we had the virtual lab. And then everybody started finding out about us. But I'm glad this is after lunch for most of you. And uh, our, uh, this is the fetal pig in anatomy and physiology. And our, uh, our uh, professors decided to go with the, the cats, and my wife is a cat lover, and she said, Jim, I don't even want to hear about it. But that whole hands-on part of it, there's something about that. It arrives at your doorstep. You have everything you need right there in the little kit. And some of the, you know, this is not Mickey Mouse at all. I, in a way, it's kind of the toughest part of the course because they do have to have that, that hands-on experience, and they're kind of alone in that, although I've been setting up virtual lab partners that are a 1,000 miles away, but they kind of hold their hands, uh, each other's hands through it as they're going uh, through this process. The, the experiments are rigorous. There's safety is built right into it. Um, they have to learn how to focus their own microscope, that sort of thing. They're easy to use. The students actually love them. Uh, you get a content list of it, lab report templates, and also the lab manual. No additional cost there. In the one I teach face-to-face, -face, the lab manual runs $125. Your average lab pack, depending, will go from like $200, and I think the most expensive one for microbiology, when you bought the microscope, the oil immersion lens, and all the rest, it's over $400. Um, this was really a cooperative uh, effort between SunGuard Higher Education, McGraw-Hill, Lab Pack, Soft Chalk, and eCollege. Now we've switched over. Uh, we were using uh, 
WebCT, Blackboard, and now we're using uh, the eCollege. Uh, as far as this, he's no longer with us. Uh, um, he's gone to uh, working for another college, but Dr. Felix Rizvanov, it was great. He was a PhD biophysicist, so you know, you know what? When they, when they said to you, "Well, what do you know about science?" Well, <laughs> we were so, and it was just by sure luck. But uh, Phil is the one who uh, brought in soft chalk to us. He sold us on the soft chalk and using Wimba for when you wanted to uh, bring uh, some video into the classroom. Lauren Dix is a behind-the-scenes person working with the instructors. But what we try to do is have it so we teach them to fish. On this, the timeline for online course development, if you're not adopting a course from someplace else and you've got to do it all by yourself, this is the way I did microbiology, it's about a nine-month uh, uh, procedure. The first part of it is all the uh, training there at the beginning when it starts out, but then you go to the midsection there, you're actually going and you're putting the modules together, but what you have to do about two and a half months before it's going to start, you want to do your quality assurance. You want to get other faculty and most importantly, students involved in this. I just put up an introduction to public health course for the 19 community colleges in New Jersey. I had the Rutgers students go through and right through uh, Soft Chalk Connect. I gave them the connection to it. They've gone in. They gave me all their uh, uh, comments about what they should uh, do for the first uh, few modules there. It's really cool how you can do that, but that's so important. Now, we put up the website. This is our old website for Anatomy and Physiology 1. We put Anatomy and Physiology 2. But what we were shocked at is right away we started getting students from Alaska. They couldn't get A&P right away in Alaska. They took it in New Jersey. Then they'd go back and finish up their nursing program there. Uh, now some tips. Make sure your students are in the course. If they're not in, I look who's not in, I call them up on the phone, hey, it's Dr. Jim Brown, can I help you in any way? And boy, if you do that and let them know if they have a problem, they can call you. Wow, what a huge difference. The other thing is we have an icebreaker there where the students share something personal, pictures, family, pets, vacations. This is my crew before we got the other two. We, yeah, that's Abby. She's from Guatemala. We adopted another two from Dyfus that fit in the middle there. And that's Emily, Billy, and Danny at the top and my wife right there. But that icebreaker is fantastic. Again, back to soft chalk, it's so cool what you can pull into it. Uh, and this is all these cool videos out there, especially Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They've got it all. What I've just started doing is taking the lab packs and actually converting them into soft chalk and having it so that uh, you have the ability of soft chalk to pull in videos and that sort of thing. It, it really makes it nice for the students. And I have little questions at the bottom for them. Now. If you have EPACs out there that are for sure real EPACs, I mean, many times sales reps would come into my office and say, oh, yeah, we've got this EPAC, and you find out it's basically a, a PowerPoint and a few videos. Uh-uh, that's not going to do it. So if you have a really good one, we lucked out with McGraw-Hill. Just as we were putting anatomy and physiology totally online, um, uh, they, they, were finding, they found out we were doing it. They said, well, we want to do this too. How about we get together on this? Well, that was, that was, that was a marriage uh, right there, and it was fantastic because they've got resources you're not going to have. So if you have that, that's terrific. Nobody had that for microbiology when I went ahead and did this. This is a, a course I did up for anatomy and physiology. I just wanted to show you different color schemes. It's so cool how you can do that. I'm going to go out and show you this. This is for, like, what we do is we give all the students at the end, we give them... Um, um, uh, basically course level assessment where we give everyone the same exam in the same class um, no matter you know like let's say if it's a basic biology course every student at the end gets it same questions and then we look at it and find out okay where's the weak points well this is one the Miller-Urey experiment here on the Earth's early atmosphere now this is this is no longer vogue but from a historical perspective it's good that they uh, learn about this so it comes up right away. We have the uh, original, you know, uh, oh, this is cool. So you can actually do the, see how you take the mouse over and you'll see, you know, this explains what a primordial C is, a liquid rich in organic chemicals, da, 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 da. We explain the basic experiment there. Uh, and then it's so easy. This is McGraw-Hill. They had it nice, uh, a nice little video. You click on it and it, it starts. It's, it's, it's really good. But then what I do at the end, 
And I, I use this for face-to-face -face classes as well. We have a little crossword puzzle here. So here we have a cross and down, so like a cross. NH3, early reducing atmosphere, that's ammonia. So, And let's see, two down is CH4, early reducing, that's methane. Whoops, didn't, oh, didn't start up here. Oh, I made a mistake on this. Ah. Anyhow, we don't, <laughs> that's, that's the answers there. Sorry about that. Uh, let me close this down. The other thing, the discussions. This is so important. This is where I put the greatest weight. Uh, the discussions every week, whatever is happening right now in microbiology is what we're discussing there. This way they can't go out to the internet and find somebody's doing this report, floating around. I try to make it tightly focused on what's happening now. We had a, this was from last, last year. We had a mumps outbreak in New Jersey, that sort of thing. Uh, what we did here is it's called the ABCs of higher quality online discussions. A is acknowledge the student's input. B, build on the student's ideas by adding content, uh, perspectives, references, readings. And three, conclude with a focused follow-up question for the class. We had a rabies outbreak. Point Pleasant is right by, uh, right by the ocean. And sure enough, a lot of cats around there. Well, sure enough, a cat got to a bat. The bat had rabies, went right through the cat population. It was a problem. The other thing I do here, this is the flip camera. I was using, now I just switched over to the iPhone here, they got all sorts of cool apps. This one's called Film IC Pro, and I also use, uh, what's the other one, I, um, iMovie. Uh, I'm just getting to learn how to do this, but you just, uh, I was pretty good with Flip, and my daughter Ashley did a great job with it. I'd say, okay, Ashley, one, two, three, and then, you know, she'd hit the button and we'd start. And then as soon as I'd stop speaking, she'd wait another three seconds, hit the button. We'd have the thing right on up to YouTube. I link to YouTube. Bingo, we got it. Another thing, YouTube is just filled with great old movies and stuff. Here's the story of Louis Pasteur. The whole thing's up there. It's cool. Now, shooting digital video through your microscope, they got this cool attachment, and the students love this. When you're studying mobility, uh, motility for uh, microbiology, you can actually put your smartphone on the top. It works with all the smartphones and shoot your own video through the top, even without the attachment. But the attachment works really nice. And that's what it's looked like when it's fully set up. Here's some pictures students have sent back. This is the, their, um, in their mouth, they've uh, uh, scraped the inside of their cheek. This is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a, uh, uh, for wine or beer, that's the organism making it. These are also yeast-like budding cells. Students send this back, and I can tell whether they've got it or not. Uh, if they're really low-tech, I say, okay, draw me a picture, scan it in, send it to me. I want to make sure they're doing the work. And now here's a student doing gram staining. And of course, you don't gram stain in a white t-shirt. Not a great idea. Uh, here they, they build their own little incubators here. It's really kind of cool. They get it up to 37 degrees centigrade, uh, body temperature 98.6, and they grow the organisms there. Here are their uh, heat fixing sli slides. And what they do is they get their whole family involved with it. It's so cool. My kids love the microscope. And uh, I'll tell you, they've used it for more school projects than you, you ever know. Uh, now, by them taking a picture of what they've grown up at the other end, I'm a microbiologist. I can look and I say, you realize you have two separate organisms there. So I can give them really good feedback. And I can tell they're not pulling it down from the internet. I know what, what it should look like. Uh, just to show you, here's the lab pack for microbiology, and this really mimics what a clinical lab does almost every day. The first thing is they'll observe it under a microscope. Um, they'll, they teach them aseptic technique, what to grow it up on, how to isolate the uh, colonies, how to do the gram stain, simple testing for it, and then antibiotic sensitivity. The end of it, after you identify it, you want to do a Kirby-Bauer test on it to see whether it's susceptible or not to a virus antibiotic. It's great for, and most of these are nurses. So here they really see what's going on in the clinical lab. Now what we did at the very end of the course, we were able, I was able to do this with biology uh, because I was 
you had the same professor teaching both. So I taught it online and I taught it face to face. And many of the students taking it online lived in Ocean County. So what I did, I said, would you do me a huge favor? Come on in and take this uh, course level assessment test. And I had uh, the same students in the classroom, not take it in the classroom. I wanted to uh, have them go over the testing center also. So I eliminated two variables right there. You had the same professor and you had uh, the exam given the same way. And sure enough, the face-to-face, -face, uh, I mean, the online outperformed semester after semester on the same question. <coughs> I just wanted to show you, they have it for all the different disciplines. This happens to be a lab pack from uh, uh, chemistry. Everything's on a micro scale, so uh, you don't have a problem with hazardous waste. Uh, I want to show you Wimba here. For the whole thing now with lecture capture, you have, uh, you're able to take uh, and even set it up in your, in your lecture in your classroom and save that so students, if they want to go over it again, they can. But the truth is, I think the videos, it's just like a commercial, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. If you're going on beyond two minutes, you're going to put them to sleep. And it's just going to be, you know, how you're just watching TV at night, you're not really engaged in it. You want them to be engaged, so a talking head. Uh, lasting 15 seconds or so to help them with a particular point. Uh, the other thing we did, here's the biology class, we actually had a, a field trip experience as a capstone report. Just published this and it's, it, the students love this. They would go out to a local park someplace and I had one student from Germany went out to the Black Forest to see the pictures they sent back. It was fantastic. The other thing I do is I use something uh, here where it's, um, uh, they use pure coaching. So. They have to do this report, write the first draft, and then when they get the second draft, what happens? They go up and send it to another student. They got a rubric. This student has a rubric. They uh, send it, read it, send it back to the student. So it goes back to the student. I never get to see the first draft. So then, based on those changes, they send that second draft to me. I read it. I don't grade it. I send it back to them with suggested changes. They rewrite it and then send the final draft to me. So it's through the washing machine twice before I get to grade it. I grade it, and sure enough, it really improves their writing ability. I learned this one at New Jersey City University, the most diverse school in the state. Many, many students from third world countries, boy, did this help their writing. It takes all semester long to do that. I just published it. Go to the newsletter there for the Instructional Technology Council. Uh, now, the other thing I've been using Skype. It is so cool. I had so many tr students have trouble with, you know, well, I couldn't, you know, it's tricky getting a microscope zeroed in if you're using oil immersion. You have to put the oil on between the high dry and the oil immersion lens, and, and I'm able to do it. I'm on the other side. I got the microscope up. They're seeing me. I'm seeing them. It's just like I'm right there, and we just published that, so you look, look online there about, uh, um, um, I've got the uh, address down below. Uh, the other thing, the web, the website. How did we get so many people? One summer, we actually closed seven microbiology courses in the summer. I think as far as online, that's more than any other school in the United States that I know of. I didn't teach them all, OK? But to go to Google, Google in microbiology online course, we should still come up the number one hit in the country. We've got a few broken links there, so I'm worried about us keeping that status. Another great place to go instead of recreating the wheel, Merlot is a great place to get resources, learning, uh, uh, learning objects, it's uh, all sorts of, and, it, and it's, you just give them credit where you get it from. It's fantastic. Another thing I would do is what they call quality matters. It's like a good housekeeping seal of approval. When I was dean, there was a real problem with, you know, it, you had this kind of administration versus faculty kind of thing. And what happened is this took me out of it. I would, you know, when they're ready to go, I say, okay, well, well why don't you put your course through quality matters? And like their course might really, they think it's the greatest thing in the world, but they don't really understand what it could be. And by these other uh, peers out there across the U.S. telling them that, you know, they need a little bit of work on it, it's not me, it's them telling. It's fantastic. So it's kind of like a selling point on, you know, if they know the course, the course has undergone quality matters, it's approved, it's fantastic. We were able to put 14 online science courses, totally online, giving us an, an associate of science with a concentration, uh, um, associate of science with a, uh, uh, in general studies with a concentration in uh, science. And let me tell you, the military absolutely love this. Speaking of the military, by the way, this is one of my military students here. 
Uh, a suggestion to all of you, hey, cater to those returning troops. I, I was around with Vietnam, and I remember people used to spit at the troops coming home. We're one of the best things for them. They're getting their education over there online now, and when they're coming home, they want to finish that up. We're here to do it for them. I pu published this in The Scientist. Well, actually, it was an interview of me, and there's a quote here. It says, it's different. The excuse is why they can't get their work done. It's not my dog ate my homework. It's more uh, my Humvee was just hit by a missile, and there was my laptop in the back. There's some sad stories coming out of there, but most of them are stories of, you know, they say it's a few seconds of terror followed by weeks of boredom. Well, this really works well in the weeks of boredom. They can get that degree. Uh, also, um, I was involved in I a chapter in this book about teaching microbiology online, so read it. Uh, just a few of these uh, feedback from the students. I couldn't be happier that I switched the online section of the course. The online labs actually work. I learned so much more than I would if I had a face-to-face -face laboratory. They were fun. You enjoy learning. It allows me to be a full-time mom, knock off my nursing prerequisites at the same time. And again, I think I mentioned this. My nursing school in Alaska told me I couldn't take A&P until September. So I decided to take it now in New Jersey. Personal note, I stepped down as dean in 2009. We adopted our last two children. Abby's the one on the right being held by my biological daughter, Emily. And that's my wife holding our two new ones. They just kind of fit in between. So I've got three, three adopted, three biological, and it's a whole nice different life. It's wonderful. By the way, that's my former wife. And in, as far as the good story department, the judge says, well, who's all those people? They said, well, there's my, those are my biological children and my former wife, and uh, she's going to be the guardian. So, I mean, it's nice. Okay, last one here. This is Jim on our back porch. Um, uh, our back deck, that's my little jungle in the back. Uh, I'm off for the whole summer. I teach online. And by the way, if you have any online science courses, microbiology or biology, you know where to find me. Uh, anyhow, it's a lot of fun teaching uh, online during the summer, and I have off with the kids. I teach full time, you know, during the year, so it's a good life. Okay, Steve, so I, I'm going to turn asked, it back over to you. Okay, thank you. I asked Jim as we got started if he actually ever does take a vacation. Then I looked at the pictures of him and I realized huh, he lives on vacation. <laughs> yeah. There's a little island called Calabria we go to, and I get that high-speed internet connection. Uh, it was cool. One of the students says, so when are you going on vacation? I said, I'm here. <laughs> well, we have a bunch of questions, so let me good, good. go through them. Um, soft chalk creates both, as a prerequisite to the question, both flash-based activities and mobile-ready activities. And the question is, because you are uh, making sure that your audience can watch, can view them on their mobile phone or anywhere, do you use a mix or do you use entire, you know, just one or the other? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, what I do is I design with that in mind. Like, they, they basically tell you, don't use huge images, you know, because they don't work, you know, they, they've got to try to squint to see it, so try to break things down in more bite size. But uh, what I like about soft chalk, you go right to the bottom of the page, there it is. Now, what I've done is when I go there, I keep my course on soft chalk connect there. All I do is get that uh, link to it, get the link, boom, it's right up on my cell phone. And it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, let, let, let me add that. The, the question about flash activities. Some of the learning activities, the drag. Oh, drop, flash! Oh, oh, I missed right. that. I'm not sure why they do that. What is it? Uh, the um, uh, Apple versus uh, Adobe. Yeah. I wish well, they wouldn't but, do but that. Several, several things have, go, have gone on in, in the industry. One of which is that Adobe has recognized that flash is, you know, it's a, it's a memory hog that has all kinds of vulnerabilities in terms of security. So they're moving away from it. And soft chalk in the next release will have all those activities that are not flash-based available as HTML5. So independent of the flash questions and accessibility, and um, it was also an accessibility issue in addition to an issue on mobile devices. So in the next release due out in June, we're going to solve that problem independently of the flash uh, argument that's going on. The other question. Um, there's a couple questions about lab pack and lab kits, et cetera. And the one that just came in is, uh, 
how do they get all of that camera and the microscope? Is, are they expensive? And what's the general oh, no, I, cost of lab packs in general? I did, okay. Yeah, let me give you just the microbiology one, which is one of the most expensive. Uh, the bio one I use is like 199 bucks. Now, I might be off by a few bucks. Um, the one for microbiology, I think it's the basic one might be, it's just below $300. Um, the microscope is 125, but you need to get an oil immersion lens for it. I think it goes for 61. Uh, nice little microscope. And the cool thing is if you use anatomy and physiology one and two, then go to micro, you can use the same scope for all three. So you can get, you know, um, uh, you don't have to make that huge outlay if you're going to do all three online. Um, a lot of our students do that. Um, oh, so let's see, on cost. Uh, the little gizmo that goes on top, is, I think it's like 40-some bucks. But as I told you, you, you know, we've had good success pretty much using this uh, smartphone. Uh, I know when I teach it face-to-face, -face, there was one bench. There were four different styles of smartphones, and all of them were able to pull it in. And what's cool, they can then take that image, put it right in their lab report. It's great. So I, especially gas in New Jersey now and getting around, I mean, it's a small little state, but let me tell you, <laughs> you're sitting on roads around here. So uh, whatever it is for the cost of the lab pack, it, you know, as far as what I'm paying for gasoline now, if you can avoid two or three trips a week to school, even if you live close by, there's a huge savings. Right. If something is interesting. Uh, Renee comments that her advising center says they cannot use lab pack because the cost is too high. Has anyone run into pushback from students regarding the lab pack cost? And I think you just addressed that, but I think that I think it's an important question. And the, the other question that was that is sort of similar to that is, what is the total cost of students? Tuition plus lab pack cost. What's the lab? You know. So well, we're, there's, we're, there's all we're, those total costs of you know education. Yeah. You got to sort of filter that in with. The big advantage we have is we're our chief. Our um, our. Uh, let's say if we're talking a four credit course we're still less than a hundred dollars a credit uh... one of those credits is for lab uh... so still there's less than four hundred bucks i think we're th you know for various fees and that sort of thing maybe another hundred on top of that and then you know uh... let's just go middle of the road uh... let's say three hundred dollars for a lab pack uh... as i say micros probably the most expensive we're talking maybe four hundred and fifty dollars or so there still you're coming out under under a thousand bucks for a microbiology course not bad um, you know hey uh, uh, my one son goes to Drexel and I pay the bill there let me tell you you know I mean these are the community colleges have a huge advantage there right and, and I think that all that sort of pushes against the fact that some of these are community college courses and people expect really low cost and you know there, there are issues w one question that just came in is, is that um, we have a robust Susan, Susan says we have a robust online division we are a state public institution and we're hearing rumbling from our partner institutions they will not accept our online labs have you run into that oh sure um, what we've uh what we originally we we did that but we teach to the exact same syllabus and uh, you really can't tell whether they're taking an online course or a face-to-face -face course the syllabus is the same so when they get their transcript the transcript makes no difference on whether it was online or not it doesn't say and they um, uh, there's a few schools very few schools because I mean uh, the vast majority of we just had a student uh, you know, community colleges used to get looked down at a lot, but because of the cost now, so many students are coming to us. But we just had two biology students last year. One got into the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, the other one got into uh, Columbia. They both had online courses. And uh, uh, your better schools are, we're not having problems getting our credits accepted anywhere because, hey, we're, we're, we're accredited. And, uh, and we've done well there. So I, I don't see the problem. Um, there, there is one institution, and I won't, if you look at my, uh, when you go to see my bio, I actually got three degrees from them. Uh, the trouble is with them, uh, you know, I tell students, do a don't ask, don't tell policy there, because there seems, well, the trouble is one 
uh, department and another department. They have different ideas about online courses. When I was dean, I was pulling my hair out with them. Um, and uh, things have been things have gotten better there. But I don't want to mention names of schools. But I would say they are a strict minority. And then you know, look at the transcript. I mean, you know, hey, uh, good schools have online courses. The Johns Hopkins, a whole bunch of schools. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's a cu couple of questions. And sort of moving away from some of these questions, may I end up back at them, is you use Wimba for recording sort of pieces of lectures as part of the instruction. Do you also use it for live lectures? That was one of the questions. I don't. Another prof when I was dean, another professor was doing it a lot, especially to go over homework examples. Um, uh, they, they would get with uh, several students at assigned time and all the rest. It is very difficult and the first thing I learned when I, my first online course was at New Jersey City University in Jersey City and I actually had to take an online course before I was allowed to teach one. This was in the dark ages, I think 1998. <laughs> so uh, I had to take a course out at UCLA and they were really into getting online every week. Well they would start at 8 o'clock at night which was 11 o'clock in New Jersey and now that we have I mean, I have students uh, from like this last summer. I had more students from California than I did from New Jersey. I had students also who were deployed. And so we're talking the Middle East there and Germany and Ireland. And uh, so it's very tough to have, um, you know, uh, real time, um, except for Skype. Now, on an individual basis, I do it all the time, especially with the military. I can't contact. They can contact me so they can say, you know, I'll get together with them online and talk about a time and, you know, hey, I try to accommodate them. And uh, sure enough, you know, it might be 4 o'clock in the morning, but I'll, I'll try to, especially when it comes to the military, you know, hey, uh, my dad was in the military and I, uh, I, I go out of my way for them. Okay, we only have a few more minutes and a couple more questions I want to get to. Do you use a textbook for your online courses? Or oh, or do you use soft chalk as kind of your e-text? Um, I definitely use, uh, for me, personally, I use, because nobody had a decent micro uh, online course uh, that I could steal at the time. Uh, there was no e -pack or whatever they call them. So I developed mine totally in um, soft chalk. And I use the textbook I'm using. Um, uh, it's McGraw-Hill, the third edition of Cohen. And what's nice, uh, and I think this is true of most publishers, uh, I get to use any of McGraw-Hill's images, no matter what book, as long as that is the required book for the class. And same with their videos. So the vast majority, I actually put right at the bottom that most of the images they see, unless otherwise noticed, are from McGraw-Hill. I use their content. And I also use CDC's content quite a bit, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, since it's government. I give them credit for it, but it's not a problem. Also, World Health Organization. Um, and even on, on occasions, I use Wikipedia. So what's nice, if you get the image from Wikipedia, it's usually you know uh, not a problem using it. I always give credit where credit's due, though. Um, OK. Um, trying to squeeze in a couple of questions before the hour is up. And when, when this is all over, I will give you information about how to get hold of uh, Jim. Of course, he's already got his email out there. And we'll talk a little bit more about follow-up um, measures. But let me just say, how, and I think you, you addressed this, but let me say it again. How are assessments carried out using lab packs at home you know, as, as authenticated as their own work? Always um, the question about online. Yeah. That's where I make them do the pictures. You know, they shoot me pictures. Uh, I make sure that I look over the data. I say, even if you're working with someone, a virtual lab partner that lives a thousand miles away, I want to make sure it's your work. So I want to see a separate lab write up. I want to see the separate lab data. I don't want to see the same. And what we do is we actually make sure they purchase it. Uh, so we get a little script from Lab Pack making sure they have purchased it and uh, they're not playing some kind of a game with us. And what's nice, by them actually shooting the pictures and sending it with their lab reports, it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling that they're actually doing it. 
Oh, the other thing, I, I, there are other companies besides LabPak. Uh, I just happen to like LabPaks. I, they work very well for me, and I don't want to step on anybody else. I mean, it's just one of, you know, there's other ones out there. At the time when I was dean, I researched all of them, and I came up with LabPak as, well, it was actually John Morrison that actually stumbled onto it for us, uh, but there's other ones now. But I, I highly recommend that they are, if there's any problems with anything, they, uh, they will replace it, and it, my students are very happy. So I'm going to take the uh, screen away from you, say a couple of words, and, and then finish it off. One thing, I want to thank you, Jim, really a wonderful job, and so much content, and people are asking a lot of questions. These questions are going into an, an attendee uh, spreadsheet that GoToWebinar provides us. So we're going to take a look through your questions that we didn't get a chance to off answer and try to get back to you with that. So Jim's going to take a look at the ones that he can answer. I'm going to take a look at the ones that I can answer. So we fail to answer your questions. My apologies, but we are at the hour, and I try to, and it's fairly close to the hour. But let me just sort of wrap up by reminding you that Jim mentioned quality matters. And quality matters is an important standard that Soft Chalk works with. Matter of fact, quality matters training <laughs> uses Soft Chalk. Soft Chalk is used to create quality matters training. So we are trying to put a series together probably this summer. And Jim is going to participate and talk about how the quality matters issues impact how science lectures, how science uh, courses online can be built. So we're that, that's coming up, and Jim will, will be back working with us on that one, which I'm excited about. Uh, there are other ways for you to learn more about soft chalk itself. Some of you have asked questions about the activities and how they're created, and was this used in soft chalk, or is that created with soft chalk? And I in, invite you to go to one of our uh, introductory webinar series. So we have them, and they go to our website, and you can find them out. We have quick tour videos. You can download a free 30-day trial. Um, we have a newsletter you can sign up for. You can you know, go to our Facebook and Twitter site and learn more about us and get excited about the kind of things we do. Uh, but finally, I just want to let, give you this last note. If you are so excited that you cannot wait for another moment to get soft chalk, which I'm sure there are some of you out there that said, wow, this is amazing. Uh, contact our sales team, salesofsoftchalk.com. If you want to talk to me, I'll be glad to uh, correspond with you. My email is easy, stevensoftchalk.com. But more importantly, Dr. Brown and all of his work, you can get direct hold of him at drjameswbrown at gmail.com. That is on your desktop as we speak. And I just want to note that you will get an email tomorrow. And in the email will be more information about Dr. Brown, about his full bio, about where the archive to this webinar is. We are currently recording this session. So I just want to make sure that uh, everybody has a chance to let their colleagues know that there are other ways of learning about 